Everything you need in a fighter, she has. Oh, it's over. Rousey has got it! Yeah, she's a woman and she's beautiful. Ronda Rousey package is different than any other package we've ever seen. Everyone who fights Rousey knows what's coming. No one has been able to defend it. She's mean, she's nasty, and she's dangerous. Ronda Rousey extending the arm! My mom was the first American to ever win the World Championships in Judo, and she really made me into who I am today. She really made me a fighter in, in every sense of the word. I'm a little uncomfortable talking about Rhonda's package, but okay, if that's where we're at, if that's the way this interview is going to go. Ladies and gentlemen, she is back on the Kevin Bean Show. We could not be more delighted to welcome the UFC women's bantamweight champion, Rowdy Ronda Rousey, here on the Kevin Bean Show. Aw, thank How you How are you, guys. my dear? I'm good, well, I'm good. The last time we had you in was just before you coached in The Ultimate Fighter. Oh, yeah. And you said on your way out, "That's this is not going to be good for me. Or something to that. <laughs> like, people aren't going to like me or something like that it's, based it, on the show. It's good, though. It was, it, it was good for all the girls uh, that were on the show. You know, it was good to have everyone have a way to get to know them. And so, like, the division, it, like, I, I don't want to be the only one that everyone knows in the division. And when I do eventually leave someday, I really don't want people to miss me that much. You know? Cause <laughs> Most I, people think the opposite. Well, well, no, it can't be like that. It can't be like, oh, when I leave, people are like, oh, well, Ron is gone. I'm not going to watch the girls' fights anymore. Right. I mean, I need it to be more like Mike Tyson. And, for like, you know, the boxing world is pretty much like good riddance when he left. And now everyone appreciates what he really done and treats him like the legend that he is, you know? And if I leave and everyone's like, well, screw that women's fighting thing, I mean, that's that's terrible. You know, I don't want it well, to be like that. Uh, I think that's a legitimate concern, but I mean, your your impact has been so great that there are lots of women coming up behind you who want to be the next Ronda Rousey. So I don't think you have to. I think your place is secure, and I think the sport is going to be fine with women, thanks to you and you know tra other trailblazers like you. Uh, thanks. I'm just saying that it's good for the fans to not be just so enamored with me all the time, and when I'm gone, to kind of be like, oh, thank God, I can't wait to see who the next champ is. I think of it's like, safe oh. to say that they're not fully enamored with you. <laughs> <laughs> after, after the last fight, you were talking to Joe Rogan, and she tried to shake your hand. You wouldn't do it. Everybody started booing. What does that feel like? Um, well, it kind of felt like the first 10 years of my athletic career. <laughs> the when, same? Yeah, when I'm the American and, you know, in, in every other country, and I am just booed. I've been booed in every language, pretty much. Well, come on now. And it sounds the same. <laughs> I know. <laughs> boo is boo. It's just always boo. It's the only, I don't know why. It's a universal word. It's the universal word, word for we don't like you. And um, that's Now, why don't you want to shake the hand of somebody just in the name of sportsmanship that you've just beaten? Uh, look, I, I commended her for her, her sports and uh, everything she did as a sportswoman and everything. But um, as a person, I think she's just a terrible human being. And until she really apologizes to the people close to me that she's wrong, then she doesn't deserve a handshake from me. My handshake means something. I don't just give it out like Skittles. So she wasn't just talking about you. She was talking about your family and that made you mad. And she's she's not going to take it back. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you got to you. You apologize first, man. You can't just be you. like, oh, that didn't happen. Da, da, da. Like, no. No, it still means something. Now, Sorry. most of us, I know if I'm standing there and everybody's booing me, I think, what did I, I did something wrong. You didn't feel like that at all. Oh, uh, well, I think that uh, her actions at the time were entirely determined by people watching her. If we were fighting alone in a gym somewhere, like, you know, like Rocky and, and Apollo did, you know, they did it by themselves. Right. She never would have offered me a handshake. Whereas oh, my I actions see. were entirely despite being watched. I'm like, I don't care if the whole world is watching me. You don't deserve my handshake and I'm not going to do it and be fake about it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It does. Um, I'm a sense maker, man. <laughs> Let me go back to what Kevin <laughs> asked about, about the last time you were in here when you were like, this is not going to be good for me for people to see me week to week on The Ultimate Fighter. How did you feel? Uh, what was the reaction like from people who got to know you a little bit more as a person over the weeks of that program? Did you get a lot of reaction? They didn't get to know me at all. You don't know me. It's a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything. You know, like it's from interviews and reality television. You don't get to know anyone at all. You get to see what you're shown. How different are you total? Are you yeah? Are you totally different uh, away from the sport than than we would imagine? Uh, I mean, I don't have the energy to be like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm from Venice Beach, man. Like that's a pretty laid back existence. Yeah, yeah. I don't really. I'm pretty, I'm pretty docile at home, man. I'm. I got people trying to kill me all day long. I, I just sit on the couch and I'm like, I'm the biggest cuddly person ever. You know? What do you watch on TV when you sit down? Um, well, it, it's funny. I was watching only like documentaries and stuff like that before. And, um, when I was in camp, it was like, you know, it's, you kind of have rough days. And so you kind of need some brain junk food at the end of the day. And I started, uh, we all started watching Big Bang Theory and we watched every single episode of it. And then, wow, uh, you we binge were, watched. Yeah, we were out of shows. And then I was like, well, let's find a new show to watch at the end of the day. And everything was just so stressful. I mean, like Walking Dead, Breaking Bad. I'm like, okay, I've been, I already <laughs> felt like I was about to die all day. Okay, I don't need any more of this. And so then suddenly I was like, I don't know where I was like, I've never seen Entourage. I'm like, that's everyone's been talking about this show for years. Let's start watching it. And so um, we started watching it. It's the only show I was watching. And we're like into the third season. And then I suddenly got like, the offer to do the Entourage movie. And I'm like, what? That come Wait, that was just a coincidence? Yeah. I like, to we totally manifested it. That's weird. Out of nowhere. I was like, wow, it was totally meant to be. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, how many episodes into Entourage did you get before you realized that the plot for every week is exactly the same? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I don't think it's the same. I don't think really? so. Really? No, no. Vince is always worried about the complain every week. Vince is always worried about the movie that he's making is going to be too mainstream, and Turtles always, you know, worried about women problems, and uh, or Eric is always having problems with his ex girlfriend, and I mean, it just seems like every single week it's the same thing. But Jeremy Piven makes that whole show worthwhile. So, what are you going to be playing in the movie? I don't know if I can tell you that. So he's got to. Oh, watch. sure you can. No one's listening Wait, for God's sake. <laughs> when does the movie come out? Um, I don't know. I know it starts. Uh, I, I I film in the middle of March. Oh, so it's a long ways off. No one yeah. will remember. <laughs> you guys, you guys are good, but you're not that good. <laughs> you are really setting yourself up for quite the movie career. I mean, is that the is that going to be your plan? Is to be an actress after you're done with UFC? Um, I don't, I don't know, but um, I like I'd like to have options. I sure. mean, after the Olympics, I didn't set any options up for myself, and then I I realized that I had an Olympic medal. No work experience, no education, and I had. I was like, "What am I going to do?" Now you retired, right? Or <coughs> after the Olympics, or no? After just, yeah, after yeah. the 2008 Olympics, I retired, and I was, uh, you know, a bartender. <laughs> I mean, a lot, a lot of good. Uh, the Olympics did me. I mean, <laughs> I, I got one job as a cocktail waitress at the Cork on Crenshaw and Adams because I could fight. That was pretty good. much the only time. <laughs> the only time Olympic medal helped me out with a job. <laughs> So then you thought, I'm going to get back into fighting. Yeah, so yeah. And now that I, I've learned that lesson that I'm in fighting, I mean, it's, it's a well-known fact that you have a short shelf life in, in MMA, mm -hmm. and um, it would be dumb for me to neglect not looking to give myself as many options as possible for... Yeah, because you've got another 60 years to live or something when you're done, so that's why Expendables and Fast and Furious and Entourage, I mean, that is, that's, all, that's all gravy at this point, right? It's, it's not gravy. But I mean, you know, it, it's it's cool. It's, I don't know. I, I, I like, it's way cool, Rhonda. It is really cool. Isn't it? <laughs> it's way cool. I know, it's cool. To be so like that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I know, but I, I I can't. I try not to focus on it at all. Really, it's like I have this chick to fight on. Uh, on the 22nd and it's That's just a like from a week from Saturday yeah and mm -hmm. like there is no Hollywood stuff unless I am winning these fights and so everything is dependent on this and I really try not to focus on it at all like I'm really not even like allowed to talk about it that much like if I if I mention movies in the gym or like anything like that like Ooh, I'm in trouble. Uh, you wrong? get your pee pee smacked. <laughs> I don't know. That, I don't, you that's punished, an expression, but... by the way. I, yeah. I, I'm not suggesting on? Rhonda has a pee pee. I'm just saying it's an expression. <laughs> Somebody yells at you. Being a lot, and that's why he's all left up. All right. Let us uh, allow us, if you would, to just take a very, very quick break and come right back with Rhonda Rousey in studio here on the Kevin Beach Show because we have many questions we want to ask you about uh, the, the upcoming weekend. A week from tomorrow night, Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas, airing on pay per view starting at 7 o'clock. It's UFC 170, and you are your fight is the co-headlining fight and there's been nope, uh, my fight's the main event man Do your, your fan is the main event is what i meant to say <laughs> that's what you meant and we'll talk about that we had uh, sarah in here not long ago by the way she seems like a very nice lady i'm gonna feel bad if you knock her head off yeah i, I call her seat mcmahon she's very sweet but she is also trying to take away everything that i've worked for my entire life so i really am not feeling that bad <laughs> well when you put it that way now i'm rooting for you we'll take a break come back more with Rhonda after this on k-rock kevin and bean on k-rock it is 22 minutes after nine UFC Women's Bantamweight Champion Rowdy Ronda Rousey in studio with us here on the Kevin and Bean Show. You can see her live and in person a week from Saturday night. That's going to be at the Mandalay Bay Events Center in Las Vegas. Tickets available now through Ticketmaster.com and MGMGrand.com. 
So how much animosity is there between you and Sarah McMahon? Is it just a professional thing or is she someone like uh, some other people we've discussed that maybe you uh, personally dislike as well? Uh, I've never had a, a personal problem with anyone that I've fought before except for one person. I mean, we were actually teammates on the 20, uh, 2004 Olympics and uh, I call her St. McMahon for a reason. You know, she's just like the biggest sweetheart ever. And, um, you know, my, my first UFC fight against Liz Carmouche, I mean, I love that girl. It's just like it's, it's nothing personal when you fight. I'm entirely emotionless when I fight, regardless if I like you or not. Um, what do you think, uh, what do you see as her biggest skills? Like, what are you most concerned about, if anything? Um, I think that she's just a really high level athlete. She's an Olympian, you know, and, uh, she's, she's a great wrestler and, uh, that's really the most of what I see brought to the table. I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's much different if you're fighting someone who casually came upon MMA as opposed to someone who has been, you know, training to be the best in the world for their whole lives and then switched over into MMA right, and applied those right. same skills there. Yeah. Um, eight fights in a row, somebody has gotten into the octagon with you thinking that they had an answer for the arm bar, and so far no one has. Is there a way to beat you, Rhonda? Um, I think it's actually 11 because I had three amateur fights. And <laughs> there was no difference other than I didn't get paid, so I still count that. And, All right, uh, I apologize. Good but uh, for the sake of suspense, I'll say yes. But for the sake of reality, <laughs> I'll say no. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you ever, I mean, this may be a stupid question because, you know, you, you mentally expect to win. You wouldn't get in there and couldn't get in there if you didn't think you were going to win. But, I mean, do you ever think about what it would feel like to lose? Because you just haven't experienced that. Um, actually, I have experienced that. I've experienced it in the worst way. You know, my like you played on that bumper. My mom was the first American to ever win the world championships in judo. And I finally made it to the finals, of the world championships in 2007. And I lost in the finals. And I spent my entire life training to to win the Olympics. And I went to two Olympics and my second one I lost in the I think it was in the in the quarterfinals and ended up having to fight back for bronze and it feels like dying and I'm so heartbroken and there's no worse feeling in the world and that's why I train harder than any of these other girls do because it really is that important to me it feels like I'm literally dying so I it is a life or death thing to me wow is does she have this uh, a lot of the same skill set that you have um, she's a very different style you know she's a wrestler and um, I come from judo. How's ju I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the difference between judo and wrestling so much. Uh, well, judo is like wrestling with a jacket on. And so there's like a whole lot of different kinds of throws and things you could do uh, in judo. And then also you have like, you have uh, pins just like wrestling, but we also have chokes and arm bars in judo. Oh, okay. And so um, I've been working on my submission game a whole lot longer than she has. This is the voice of a Ronda Rousey here on the Kevin Bean Show. Again, the fight is going to be a week from Saturday night in Las Vegas. Go to Ticketmaster.com or MGMGrand.com. Kevin, as you will vouch, uh, see it in person if you can, if yeah, you get the chance, awesome. right? There's yes. nothing. There's nothing like it. Um, do you have time? You're so busy this week with training. Are you able to watch any of the Winter Olympics, Ronda, or do you have no interest in those? Uh, I really, I do have a great interest in the Olympics, but I haven't been able to watch really anything. Uh, anything at all. Because we keep hearing these stories about, especially that story that came out this week about uh, about how popular Tinder is at this year's games, the 2014 <laughs> games, because all the athletes are young and hot and horny and all living next to each other. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like to live in that Olympic village when you're an athlete? Ooh, all right. Um, <laughs> well, when we first get there, it's like everyone has been training their whole lives and it's so important. Oh, no, my God, you know, you're so focused. And then as every day goes on, there's more and more people that are done. Who they finished right. with their experience. Finished whatever it is. with their whole life of work is just <laughs> over, and they're sitting in the village with there's they don't have to pay anything. They eat for free. There's a lot of beer sponsors that open up clubs and stuff all the place where you drink for free. All right. And there's the, all the most finely tuned athletic machine, you know, fit people in the whole world sitting around that suddenly <laughs> have a lot of steam to blow off and nothing to do. Either they're super, super celebrating and drunk or they're super, super depressed and drunk. And they're all looking for a whole month to kill. And so just look at the difference between the opening ceremonies and the closing ceremonies. Everyone's super proper and in their suit and have their whatever beret or whatever retarded kind of outfit they have them wear you know strolling in holding their little camera phones up even though everyone's told not to have a camera everyone tink, 
busts yeah. it out the second they walk in. <laughs> and then watch the closing ceremonies where there's people wasted, having, you know, people on top of their shoulders stumbling around. <laughs> I mean, they only have close-ups during the opening, during the closing, wide shots. Long yeah. shots. Yeah, oh, look how at the team go. It's just like that. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's got, hammered at the closing <laughs> ceremonies. Yeah. That's awesome. And you've got all these, like you mentioned, they're incredibly fit people, young people, your age, who ha- you already have a lot in common with, and they're exotic. I mean, you have your pick of anyone around the world. You want that hot Argentine guy or that hot Brazilian girl <laughs> or the German or whatever. They're all there for the picking. Yeah, so um, there's just a lot of, uh, they promote condoms, too, because I think that's how pandemic spread. Is you, just, <laughs> you, you bring all these people from all the corners of the world, and you're like, hey, would you would you like that Panama strain of syphilis? <laughs> yeah, I got that for you. <laughs> that's why they had to quarantine Bob Costas. That's right. Because he was spreading eye. everything to everybody. <laughs> um, I can't imagine, there's probably, there's probably nothing like that kind of camaraderie that you have in an Olympic village, I imagine, but do you have a lot of close friends in UFC is there is there any kind of equivalent at all to that yeah actually I live uh, with some of the girls that are in my division there's some of my best friends and we even talk about when when we fight someday what what our fight posters will say and you know what we will say in the interviews and try and mess with each other and um, it's just like we have if you think about it the person you're in the cage with is who you have the most common with of anyone else in the world you guys are fighting because yeah the same thing is just as important to both of you and so, um, yeah, I, I'm really close with other other people that I I, I fight against, or, or they're, just, they're just fighters too, you know. And uh, yeah, what's your energy like th- in this week leading up to next week? It seems like to me, if I was in that position, I would just want it to be here so I could. Yeah. Get in the ring. I'm totally like, especially since I started this camp in shape, you know, it wasn't like the last fight I came back from doing all these movies and stuff and I had to get into shape. Like it's totally was like, you know, the montage of like <laughs> every day you see a little improvement, you know, like, just like that. And uh, this fight I just started, I was like, I was already just in shape from the last one. And so I've been really impatient for this fight from the very beginning, which is because I pretty much came out of last fight unscathed. I didn't have a single bruise on me. Right. So. Like if, if you could have had that, that last fight a week, you know, uh, after the last fight, if you could have fought this one a week later, you would have been happy, right? I would have fought it that night, to be honest. <laughs> That's what you need is to start up. doing double headers. Yeah, I was, yeah exactly. I was like, I'll double it up in a night. I mean, in judo, I would fight seven times in a day and I would weigh in that morning. You know, that's the format that I'm used to. And usually my first match was my worst one. And so, you know, I had two and a half rounds pretty much down. That means I had, you know, four and a half left in me. Right. So why not? Two why and not a half is it? a long fight for you, though. Yeah. Yeah, I guess but, so. <laughs> it's the longest um, one yet. Yeah. How about when it's in Las Vegas versus another location? Does that make any difference to you at all? Are you at all distracted by everything that city has to offer? Uh, no, it actually makes it a lot easier because um, the hotel and the venue are in the same building. And so um, it's like I pretty much walk down from my hotel room into the venue and then I fight and then I walk right back up. So it's like really not really any distractions at all, except for all the people that I run into, and you know, yeah. like on the way down. Um, but I mean, that's pretty much anywhere. It saves me a bus ride. So I <laughs> saves her a bus ride. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, what's the uh, what's the after party like? My after party is uh, buffalo wings and like either apple pie a mode or brownie a mode i need some sort of dessert with Something conflicting temperatures <laughs> yes no no it has to be buffalo wings like okay. it, it has to be and, and i had such unsatisfactory buffalo wings after my last oh, fight that hurts. oh that's sad to hear someone took me to like a fancy restaurant give me some fancy buffalo no, wings it was like no i want some where the place is like it's like a b-rated restaurant <laughs> you know maybe c yeah yeah exactly i want something like that where it's like i don't even i hope this hot sauce is hot enough to kill whatever it is might have fallen in it that's the kind of buffalo wing i want and so i'm gonna find somewhere off the strip next time that's what i'm doing i love this woman so much (laughs) um ufc 170 rousey versus mcmahon that is going to be saturday night one week from tomorrow night at the mandalay bay event center in las vegas get your tickets go see it in person ticketmaster.com or mgmgrand.com you're uh you're looking past this one at all do you have any idea what happens after this one for you Rhonda? nope my life does not exist after this fight i could die okay. on the 23rd and i don't care 
Okay. Well, we'd care. We don't want you to die in the oh, No, I don't guess. die. That's, so that's cool. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we'll see you again soon, but uh, you're filming the Entourage movie in March. You've got Expendables 3 coming out in August. You've got Fast and Furious 7. That's not coming out to the following year. And then uh, hopefully lots of good stuff after that. Great to see you again, Rhonda. Thanks so much for the time. We really enjoyed it. N- nice to figuratively see you, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Kevin and Bean Show. It's pr- 